Hello, this is Kimberly Scott from Kimberly Scott Science, and today we're going to talk science fairs, which is a big passion of mine, and I have helped out with science fairs and really seen that it can be a wonderful family experience, but you really need to know how to do age-appropriate projects and have some tips before you go into it. So I'm going to give you some tips for second and third grade science fair projects. If you would like tips for kindergarten and first, fourth and fifth, please see in the comments and you will find the links to those videos and you can also go to KimberlyScottScience.com to find my blogs on that. So I divided it up into the different grade levels. So the first one is to make sure the idea is child driven. This is applied for any age level. You want it to be their idea, not your idea. You're going to lose them if it is your idea. It's got to be something of interest to them. The next thing is you want to make sure you are the assistant and they are the leader so that they will take ownership of their project. I always call it the gopher. You're there to go for this and go for that. So you want to really make sure they are driving the project, that they are taking ownership. You're there to guide them and if you see something going on that they shouldn't be doing to say, hey, I don't think you should do that, you're there to help answer questions for them, but they're the leader. And they're going to have fun being the leader and saying you're their lab assistant for them. The next thing is you need to make sure you develop a schedule. So you really want a good time frame. We start notifying families of our fair about eight weeks before. I have a science fair workshop six to seven weeks before. So that gives families that want to do plants time to grow their plants. It really gives families time that know their child can't just work on a lot of it in one weekend to be able to spread it out over several weekends. Think about your child, think about their attention span. And when you work on the project, if you know their attention span is done for the night, then you stop working. And if you come out with a good schedule, it can be our hypothesis tonight, our research this night, we're gonna actually do this, the experiment on Saturday. We're going to evaluate our data on Sunday. Divide it up. If they're really in the mood to work on it, then just go with it and let them work. But when they're done, they're done. The next thing is you want to make sure they take the time to research all the safety precautions. You're going to want to look it up too. You are their assistant, but they need to understand why they have to wear safety goggles, why they have to wear gloves, why maybe they need to do it in a well-ventilated room. They need to understand that, and then you need to double check as their assistant that they are doing it safely and it's age appropriate. So a second and third grade project, kitchen chemistry is fantastic but they can start to take it up a notch and they might be able to use things like hydrogen peroxide or rubbing alcohol or Alka-Seltzer tablets. So you really wanna make sure that they know the safety precautions for that or if they're building even things like slingshots, they need to understand that and if it's an age appropriate one for them. The next thing is to really let them be the problem solver. So when they're designing the experiment, they are coming up with what container should I use? What rubber bands should I use? What's my budget? How much should I, can I spend on this project? And they will surprise you. So don't just jump right in when you see a problem. Let them figure it out. And the thing about a science fair is there is a section called problems encountered or possible errors. So if things go wrong, I always just say, well, we'll just make sure to list that in our possible error section. So keep that in mind. The next thing and the most important thing is to keep it simple, clear, and um, concise. So simple, clear, and concise for their projects. Don't get it all jumbled in with too many things. You want one change and you wanna measure one thing. So I'm gonna show you just a couple of examples really quick to, to help you with what a second and third grade project should be like. This one is the effect of the amount of potato skin on the amount of volts. You'll see he hand wrote some things in and he chose to type. When you get to second and third grade, give them the choice of how they want to do it. If they're not ready to type, then have them hand write it. He did one change and that was to change how much he peeled the potato. He did three trials. So in second and third grade, you really want to move up to at least three trials. And he did three changes. So he did 100% of the skin on, half of the skin off, then all of the skin off. Made it very easy to figure out. Here's an example of a project that starts to take kitchen science up a notch. This is elephant toothpaste, so it's hydrogen peroxide. They need to research the safety for this one. This was a second grade project. 
did a very good job with it. it was very safe and very cautious remember these kids will surprise you so again he did cold room and hot water so very simple clear concise change and he timed how long the eruption was very easy you'll see again there's some handwriting on this one as well as typing and lots of really good clear pictures so don't forget to take pictures and this conclusion just a paragraph is good for second and third grade nice clear conclusion and there's our problems encountered section which is good to have for when those things happen and this last one which is a favorite of mine to teach is Cartesian divers if it was a kindergarten project he would do with and without salt he decided to do salt and water so typically you don't do a Cartesian diver in salt but guess what the ocean has salt water in it right and we have submarines in salt water so it was very relevant so he did no salt 45 milliliters of salt and 90 milliliters of salt and he timed how long it took the diver to go to the bottom very easy very clear and very concise and he could do it on his own mostly he just needed a little bit of help with making the divers and did the research but once he got it he was able to do it so remember keep them very clear again some is handwritten some is typed and we have really good pictures so please be sure to go to KimberlyScottScience.com where you can get more tips on this and helping to develop an age-appropriate project and you can also visit me at Teachers Pay Teachers where we have our workbook series which is developed into those age levels and it really helps families have a fun experience with the science fair. So have fun experimenting.